responding last night. <laughs> We'd better get the wine out again. It obviously works. Um, surprisingly, even on the last day, there are some housekeeping ones. Um, this one, a quilted jacket, um, was found by the Croft Design stand yesterday afternoon. Somebody got very excited, I think, trying on a new stole and left that behind. It's here if you'd like to claim it. And upstairs in the Queen Mother Hall, there is a light blue cardigan being left on a chair. I didn't move it because I thought somebody reserved it. They were so keen to get to worship this <laughs> afternoon. So if you're missing a light blue cardigan, it is on the back of a chair in the Queen Mother Hall. A message from the folks at the bookstore. They've asked if I would, on their behalf, offer their very warm thanks to you, not only for the business that's gone through the store, but actually for your friendship and fellowship. They said they appreciated that enormously. So on their behalf, thank you. Um, workshops. Those who presented workshops yesterday and day before and had PowerPoint presentations, and the hope is that if you would like to send those to Roger Skelhorn, where's Roger? Can you stand up, Roger? Do you mind? Um, <laughs> well, never mind. It wasn't a question, really. It was just... It wasn't influence, it was authority. Can you stand up? <laughs> um, <laughs> Roger, if you've got a PowerPoint presentation you used in the workshop and would like to share it by putting it on the website, would you please contact Roger and give him, uh, allow him to give you his email and then the process will go ahead. And while we're talking about websites, all the presentations in here have been videoed. So the keynote speeches, the Bible study have been videoed. They will appear on the website, the, the gathering website, which is really good news. Uh, another mundane one, keys and badges. You're all supposed to have been out of your room by 9 o'clock. Keys and badges in the boxes in reception on the rotunda desk there, please. Um, feedback forms. We would love to have your reaction to this because whoever is planning the next gathering, and it won't be me. <laughs> uh, thank you, but it won't be me. It still won't be me. Um, would like to learn from what's happened at this gathering. So there will be feedback forms coming to you. Please don't just nod at them and think, oh, that's useful. Could you please return them, complete them and return them um, in about 10 days when they've got to you? The Health and Healing Group, there's a questionnaire still out and some responses to come back. So if you've got um, questionnaires for Health and Healing, please would you um, get those back to the box also at the Rotunda. I think those are all the housekeeping notices. Um, Oh no, there's uh, Esther. Where's Esther? Esther, I've got some. No, you can stay there. Don't, you don't have to rush down. I just have a letter that's addressed to you saying confidential. <laughs> it was found this morning, and we, we think it ought to be better in your hands than in Harper Adams. But there we are. Um, so many of you have been generous and kind in, in offering your thanks and appreciation of all that's been shared in this gathering. But there are always things we can do better. And um, we discovered the other day, courtesy of Bishop Richard, a very short video clip of what a proper clergy gathering should be like. And so that we can all be aware <laughs> so that we can be all aware of the benchmark that we should be striving for, we're going to show you a clip. I don't know how to work this, but Nick does. Listen carefully. Yeah, that there's an opportunity for the graduate to relax. 
know what we've got to aspire to. <laughs> Bishop Richard has been watching that and he's going to tell us how we're going to move in that direction. <laughs> um, uh, thank you to Paul Towner for asking me whether I was actually present at that uh, <laughs> I simply, well that's taken up most of my time anyway, because I, I, was, I was going to say I certainly don't need quarter of an hour, but I simply wanted to take the opportunity, that, uh, because of the gap that's opened up in the programme, just to say uh, a few thank yous. I will probably miss out people I should mention by name, and if I do I can only apologise. But I do want to start by thanking everybody. Um, I think this has been a quite remarkable uh, gathering, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I think the way that everybody has engaged so wholeheartedly in it has just been fantastic. I'm well aware I haven't had a chance to, to meet everybody who's, who's here, and I'm sorry about that. Perhaps you're not, but I am. And, um, uh, and so I obviously don't know how everyone's feeling, but my impression is an extraordinary lack of, of cynicism and grumbling and so on, and a remarkable degree of engagement. And the whole atmosphere, to me, uh, bodes extremely well and encouragingly and I'm very grateful to everybody for the part that you've all played but I do want to single out a few people first of all those who've, who have come from sort of outside our number um, the sponsors particularly the, the, the Bible Society and the Mercers Company and those who have uh, run the stalls they have been greatly appreciated the Wemtech team who have looked after the chapel for us and the workshop leaders, I'm not going to mention everybody who led a workshop by name, but again, my impression is the workshops have been extremely well received. Uh, I, I'm not a natural workshop person, I have to confess. Uh, and in fact, my attendance record is, is not unblemished on this particular occasion. <laughs> but uh, it's great, as long as you've enjoyed them, that's fine. Um, <laughs> No, pressing business. Alistair will, Alistair will vouch for me. We had, we had pressing business to do. Um, no, 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 no. You can find out the cricket score wherever you are, don't worry. No. <laughs> but uh, seriously, the, the workshops have been a terrific part of the whole event. So thank you very much to the workshop leaders. I, re I really want to thank uh, Phil Cansdale and Valerie Pitt very much indeed. It was an inspired idea from the planning group, I think, to ask, uh, to invite chaplains from outside the diocese, albeit not very far outside, to join us as, 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 as our chaplains and worship leaders. And we're enormously grateful to you. The way that we've been able just to uh, arrive for worship and be swept up into it without having to, to worry about it and be concerned about who was doing what. And I think we've had a real richness in our worship, which has greatly undergirded all that we've been doing. So thank you very much indeed to Phil and to Valerie. The speakers that we've had uh, have all been thanked, but just to underline again, I mean, Bishop Helen Ann, I think we, were, we got off to such a sort of uh, stimulating, and I wrote down here in my notes, meaty. I, I, you know what I mean? There was such a lot of substance to what Helen Ann said to us that it really rooted us in really serious, we were able, we've been able to enjoy ourselves, but in the context of being given some really serious stuff to chew over. And that has been really enriching for us. And Helen Ann got us off to a great start. And it's been great having her around for the whole time uh, and uh, talking to all, with, with meeting all sorts of people. Neil Hudson, I think if we really listened and take to heart what he said, none of our churches will ever be the same again. And um, I, Neil, there was a remarkable amount in what Neil said to us. Neil, I know he's not uh, able to be with us now, 
but uh, uh, I know that, I mean, I should be writing to him and I know others will want to pass on to him our real gratitude for all that he shared with us. And Bishop Gordon, well, we've still got another one. I'll, I won't have anything else to say anymore about him. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I did actually say to, to, to Gordon when, when, when we arrived on whatever day it was, about a fortnight ago, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> um, I did actually say to, to Gordon, would there be any, differ any noticeable difference between the Bible studies and the after dinner speech? And uh, I, I actually said it to him flippantly, but I, I didn't realise that actually that was rather prophetic, really, because. <laughs> but there is a serious point to that, because I think Gordon has got an extraordinary gift for uh, the profound Bible studies, but wrapped up in, a, in such an easily and accessible and enjoyable and fun way of pre presentation. But equally, the, the after-dinner speech, uh, which was just wonderful, but again, with those poignant, really quite profound uh, aspects to it. You may not remember the profound bits, but the... Um, <laughs> in fact, I'm not sure I can now I think about it. <laughs> But is he here, or is he still? Yeah, yeah. But Gordon, we are enormously grateful to throw yourself into the into into being with us in the way that you have has added such a lot, and we're really, really grateful to you as well. So, to all those who've come from sort of outside the diocese, thank you, and I'll come on to the more more insiders in a minute. But I think they all deserve a round of applause. And now I want to thank the, the planning group um, because it, it is often a pretty thankless task to be on a planning group for this sort of event. And we really have been extraordinarily well served by the planning group. Uh, Penny Littlewood did an enormous amount over the bookings and the sort of mechanics, the organisation of the conference, and then really sadly, for medical reasons, was just unable to be here. She was forbidden to come by a doctor. And she was. Uh, understandably really upset about that and uh, I know that you will want us to pass on to Penny our gratitude for all the work that she did. Then there's Nick Helm. Yeah, then there's Nick Helm. Um, <laughs> Nick, Nick, you, Nick was responsible for booking Joe Brand so that worked out well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, Kelvin Price, uh, who has been doing so much of the practical stuff and he's, he's been gently cajoling, nudging. Mind you, he has got more children the old, than the old woman who lived in a shoe. So um, he, he's, he's herding us around has been probably rather easier than being at home, I should imagine. So, so, but Kelvin's had a, ha added a great deal. Roger Skelhorn, we've already seen Roger leaping to attention at the request of the chair of the planning group and I know I can well imagine Roger's contribution in his characteristically wise and dry way. Ian Naylor, do you know Ian, is Ian here? I'm ashamed to say I haven't, I haven't knowingly set eyes on him the entire time we've been here. Where is he? Is he? That's another mystery solver, isn't it? Right. Um, yeah, right. Well, I was going to say, Phil was saying it'd be unlikely that we would invade another country. I think we ought to invade another diocese. And I think that uh, I would like Ian, as he's already in Telford, to lead our attempt to take over the whole of, uh, of Telford for this diocese. And uh, I'm sorry that he's gone. Or oh, is that an unpopular move? I thought that would, <laughs> I thought that would carry public opinion. Anyway. But uh, Ian, thank you to Ian for the contribution. Um, Mary uh, Norwell, Norwell? No. Norwell, Norwell. I only met for the first time yesterday. She seemed to me a remarkably sensible, sane person to have been on this planning group. <laughs> uh, I can only imagine that she made a great contribution uh, to it. So thank you very much indeed to you. Then, then there's Alistair. Now, I, most of you know Alistair. He's the husband of the resident uh, Louise <laughs> McGowan. <laughs> but I think he was on that in his own right. And uh, <laughs> so thank you, Alistair, uh, for that and so much else as well. And um, Gordon Powell, we've had two sort of financiers. Uh, Gordon Powell 
and then Stephen Herbert, who have uh, been, uh, you know, the, the people looking after the money, and, uh, you know, if there is a shortfall, it'll be their fault. And um, uh, if it's a surplus, it'll be our uh, good stewardship, but that's fine. Uh, but thank you very much indeed to them. And then last but not least, Mike Watkins. Um, there is a big mystery for me as to how somebody whose entire professional career has been involved in first-class cricket could arrange a gathering like this to coincide with the first <laughs> And I reckon you've solved easy, you know, greater mysteries than that. Uh, can you please enlighten me? It is extraordinary, really. But um, nonetheless, we do want to say thank you to you, Mike, your contribution, both before, and I know how long you've been working on this and how long you've probably already started the planning you're going to be doing for the next one. Um, <laughs> It's not just you that can talk about influence rather than authority rather than... <laughs> but, but, but seriously, the amount of work that Mike has put into this over a long period of time, but also here, I think the word avuncular was probably invented for Mike. I'm not sure, actually. Perhaps that's the wrong word. Gordon's good on words. It's not anthrax, anyway, but it's avuncular. <laughs> Um, but but a, a, a reassuring presence here, but also extremely focused on what we've been about. Able to think on his feet when things have had to be shifted for various reasons, but also with a great sense of calm and a confidence in what we're actually about at this gathering. So I really would, on behalf of all of us, to say to all the planning group, but especially to Mike Hawkins, Mike, thank you so much. I'm going to ask Helen Ann. Where's Helen Ann? Where are you hiding? Up at the back. You wanted to come and say something. <coughs> I feel like I'm on the Price is Right or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on down. laughs> um, um, I just really wanted to say uh, briefly. Uh, a huge thank you to each and every one of you for the way you have welcomed me and brought me into into the family um, of your diocese during this time. It's been it's been incredible, and I've so enjoyed it. G.K. Chesterton said that angels can fly because they take themselves lightly, and my sense of the life of this diocese is that there's a lot of lightness, um, a lot of joy, and a lot of willingness to go on the journey forwards together. So. As I take my leave of you, I want to assure you of my prayers as you continue in your, in your journey, as you continue following uh, Jesus Christ in all that you do. I want to say particularly thank you to, to Bishop Richard, to Bishop Alistair, to Bishop Gordon for the way in which you've welcomed me and made me a part of, of this family. Now, in Maori culture, you can't take your leave without uh, giving a gift, and so um, because I try to travel light, um, I take small things. Um, so Bishop Richard, I have two things for you. First of all, some chocolate. <laughs> but this just isn't any old chocolate. <laughs> this is uh, New Zealand's dark chocolate, which is infused with tea grown in my diocese. So it's very special chocolate. <laughs> and the second thing I want to give you is in, in Maori culture, uh, a symbol of protection and strength for the journey ahead is the symbol of a, a fish hook. And it's quite an appropriate uh, image, I think, ties in quite nicely with uh, John chapter 21, the idea of the, the deep fishing that we do for, for people. And so I want to give you um, a gift of this, this glass 
a fish hook as a symbol of strength for, for your journey as you lead people in this diocese over the years ahead. And this comes with, with my prayers, with my gratitude, and with my aroha, which is a Maori word for a sense of deep and abiding love and commitment and solidarity as a brother bishop. So may God bless you and thank you.